Guys, today I want to talk about it Tuesday, what we're talking about, high top shoes versus low top shoes, injury prevention, and then also athletic performance, okay? So it's commonly thought that we wear high top shoes in order to prevent the dreaded ankle sprain. And this is the inversion ankle sprain, which is the most common ankle sprain seen in athletics. I've um, got a study out of the journal Sports Science Medicine 2017, December. Does shoe collar height, so does the height of the shoe, influence ankle joint kinetics and kinematics in the sagittal plane maneuver? So basically all that's saying is the ankle joint uh, moving like this. Now, what researchers found is that the height of the shoe can effectively reduce ankle joint range of motion. And now the high top shoe prevents ankle joint range of motion in the sagittal plane. But what it can also do is it can reduce peak ankle plantar flexion and power during the push off phase, okay? So what these researchers uh, went out to study is the shoe height, how does it affect the range of motion and the athletic performance? Well, it lowers the propulsion uh, that you, the force you can develop, and then it also lowers the range of motion. Now, you would think that lowering the range of motion is a good thing, but if we do that time after time again, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower performance and we're gonna lower the normal range of motion. So, when you do go into a super athletic type move or roll your ankle, your ankle's not gonna be used to that, okay? And then I got another important study. Uh, this is, uh, High tops versus low tops are a bunch of ankle sprains in basketball players. And this is a randomized study, 622 intramural basketball players. Now, the interesting thing is they took uh, some of them in high top shoes, some of them in low top shoes. And what they found, uh, there was uh, seven high top ankle sprains and four in the low tops, and then also four in high tops with inflatable air chambers. So 11 uh, ankle sprains in high tops and four in low tops. Uh, meaning, uh, what they found was that uh, between those three groups, there wasn't a strong relationship between the shoe type and ankle sprain, meaning that it had virtually no effect on ankle sprains. Um, also, here's an interesting study. This is out of the journal Foot and ankle research in 2014, the effect of high and low top shoes on inversion muscle activation. Now what they had was they had people uh, land on a tilted surface, okay? And what they found was that in people that wore high top shoes, the muscles responded slower than the low top shoes, meaning that the stability is gonna be compromised within high tops because when the muscles don't react fast enough, what happens is that load gets transferred onto ligaments and tendons, okay? So what you want is you want your foot to react to the ground forces as soon as possible in order to stabilize the ankle joint. When you delay that by wearing high tops, there's gonna be more room for injury to the ligaments and tendons, okay? Now, moving on to Kevin Durant and his Achilles tendon tear. If you saw the video, um, what he did was he actually powered off his foot. And then if you look at it in slow motion, there was like a snap that was in his calf. And that was the Achilles tendon rupturing. Now I've got a couple uh, studies here. One out of the Brown University, tendons absorb shock, muscles won't handle. Okay. Now what they found is that when somebody did a super athletic type maneuver, the tendons would load faster than the muscles could react. Now, if we're wearing high top shoes, what happens is those tendons will load more and more and more until that muscle kicks in and takes away and delays some of the force generated from that athletic maneuver. And another good study, this is a Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine back in 2010, can footwear affect Achilles tendon loading? And what they did was they loaded the Achilles tendon with high tops and low top shoes. Uh, now, high top shoes reduced peak Achilles tendon tension by an average of almost 10% less compared with low top shoes. You say, oh, that's great. It takes some tension and loading off of the Achilles tendon if I'm wearing the high top shoes. 
Okay, but in reality, what's going to happen is as you're going to diminish the load, what you're going to do is you're going to decondition that tendon. So over the course of months, years, decades, what's going to happen is that decrease in loading. When you do do a peak athletic maneuver, such as a basketball move to blow by the basket, okay, like in the Kevin Durant situation, is that tendon wasn't loaded and it wasn't having that stress normally on it. So when he did have a, a previous injury and then goes into that normal an NBA Finals to blow by for a layup, what happens is he overloaded the tendon because it wasn't conditioned to handle that stress. It overloaded the tendon and the tendon failed. Plus he was wearing high top shoes, which is going to delay his ankle stability because the muscles aren't gonna react and the tendons are gonna take all that shock, okay? So in summary, what high top shoes, they're going to delay muscle activity which is then going to transfer that shock to the tendons. So the tendons are gonna to have to take the brunt of that force and it's also going to reduce ankle range of motion. So if you're going for athletic performance, injury prevention, well, I would go with the low tops, okay? If you are injured and looking to rehab that injury, I would go possibly look at a high top, but very, very minimally, okay, and cut out the high top as soon as possible. So you want to ride that fine line between mobility and stability, okay? And if you want to find out um, when, how to do that, obviously find a practitioner in your area that specializes in these things. Thanks.